Hello, Jones, you there? Hello, Jones. I guess you're not there. Okay, whatever. We can always go over things later, Jones, okay? Hello, Dewin. Hello, Duvier. Hello, Macindo. Hello, Dr. Bennett. How are you doing, Dewin? I'm very fine. How are you doing? Good. Good. Yeah, just leave your camera off because that conserves bandwidth, as you know, right? Yes, yes. Uh, okay. My camera is off, actually. Yeah, that's good. Yes, that's sir. good. Yeah, basically, when you start, well, okay. You do Facebook Live, right? Yes. Oh, when do you have plan to have a Facebook Live again? Do you know? Um, I think Tuesday would do. I can I can uh, arrange something for Tuesday. Okay, just let me know ahead of time, right? If, if you can, the day before or yes, something, uh, just to keep me on yes. the alert. Because you don't have to do anything. I just when you start, I just go there and and uh, fill and. Uh, uh, record it. You know okay. what I mean? And you don't even know yeah. I'm there. You don't even know I'm there. <laughs> and, and, and we basically distribute it to other places okay. than you do. You know what I mean? Yes. So it's good for you because hopefully more people will see it in different places. Yeah, that, I, I, I think that would uh, really be great. That would be wonderful. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I, I'm just I'm just trying to to think of a topic uh, that I can probably uh, try to uh, talk about, and then something uh, simple, then, something and then similar, I'll, I'll be set. something simple, and and you know not long, just something simple, just so you get okay. used to doing it, just so, just to, okay. so you be, become you know good at, it. Uh, because it okay. takes time, and it's like anything mm -hmm. in medicine. Uh, you you got to yes. practice. At first, when you try something, of course, you're not going to be very mm -hmm. good. But then the more right. you do it, the better you get. Mm -hmm. It's simple as that. Uh, some okay. people expect to know it really quick. And if they don't learn it quick, they leave it. They don't take the yes. time. And in other parts of medicine, they know they have mm -hmm. to study EKGs. It doesn't matter mm -hmm. if they don't like it. They have to learn it. Yes. It's the same thing with this tech. You, you got to spend time and you got to you got to make an effort and, you, and okay. you can't just give up the first problem you have which most people do if it's not right. super easy to say ah, i don't want to use it so anyways okay. uh, it takes time okay and there's another gentleman here jones muna uh, he's a big he goes on facebook a lot in africa maybe, maybe you've seen okay. his name around he's here uh, to learn he, it he's, 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 he's Go Is ahead. the one you were telling me about yesterday? Yeah, yeah. Yeah, Jones, I want you to meet Dewinda. Hello, Jones, Dewin. Jones, are you there? Hello, Mr. Yes, I'm there. Your yes, okay. is from Zambia. Yeah, yeah, but Dewin, this is Dewin Shachimba. He's also doing a Facebook Live. Oh, okay. Nice meeting you, Mr. Shachimba. Okay, nice I'm, meeting you too, sir. Yeah, uh, it's, it, I, I heard about you yesterday from uh, Dr. Bennett. Okay, that is good. Yeah, yeah. yeah. Well, Jones, jo Jones has a studio, like I showed you. That's like okay. I'll show you. I'll show you now. And he, yes. I don't know. I guess to, uh, Monday you're going to do a show, right, Jones? Yes, yes. Okay, let me show you. Uh, show me the studio, like just like. Uh, the window. Okay, let me share the screen. Okay, this is my turn. This is my turn to present. All right. <laughs> okay, I think I, I think I showed you yesterday. Okay, here's internetmedicine.com. Okay, which your okay. your general yes. your general medical. So they'll go here. You see the Zambia nursing studio. You see yes. this? You see this link? Okay, oh, I made that this, for this Jones. Looks nice. I made that for Jones. Yes. Wow. Okay. And he now he's going to wow. teach wow. nurses, right, Jones? Yes, yes, yes. Yeah. Now this is a Facebook Live. This is and and I I just copy it and put it on this page. 
And I also so it was took, Facebook Live and then you. Yeah, it was Facebook Live and then I took the code and made it into YouTube. Okay. You don't wow. know, you and you don't know how I know how to do that. You don't know how to do that, but I do it. Now look, this is a YouTube video which I made <laughs> from Facebook Live. You must really be good at these things. Yeah, I'm good at it. <laughs> well, I spend the time. You guys study medicine, I study this. But here's Jones' show right yes. here. And this is all Facebook uh -huh. Live, right, Jones? Yes, yes. That it's all true. Facebook. And and Jones, you didn't you didn't even know I was there, right? No, I didn't know. <laughs> I just saw yeah. it when I yeah, I didn't I even know you were there. And I, I just went there and <laughs> and Jones did a show there and I copied it. He didn't even know okay. I was there. He he interacted with his audience by texting. Uh -huh. And what what I wow. basically do is uh, let me turn the sound on. Now, do you guys hear this yet? Do you hear that? Mm -hmm. You can uh, hear it, Not right? much, though. Okay, so he does his Facebook Live just like you do with the Facebook Live, the blackboard mm -hmm. and, and explaining things. So he yes. has a nursing studio. And what kind of videos are you going to do, Duen? Uh, I don't, I don't understand. Okay, you're gonna have some kind of medical. Sorry? Me, you're gonna have some kind of medical thing, right? Yes, yes, uh, the medical ones. Okay, just let me know the topic, okay, before you do it, so I'll make a studio for you. Or do you oh, want to do it in the okay. Zambia nursing studio? Okay, uh, uh, I'll you, let you know that. Go ahead. Uh, yeah, let I'll me let know. you know the topic. Yeah. Uh, once I'm set with the topic, I'll, I'll sure let you know. Okay. Uh, okay. I think. Yeah, yeah nothing made. By, by, by midday tomorrow, I should, I should be able to, to let you know. Yeah, nothing big. Nothing, nothing to, you know, don't, don't, 15 minutes, that's all. Okay. I, I think I'll, I'll try to prepare something. Uh, yeah, in not, that nothing long, today. because that takes a long time. And you, I don't want you spending a lot of time preparing. I want you to learn the platform and do mm -hmm. not to do a lot of shows, a lot, just to practice. Yes. All right. And you get better with every one. Hey, Dr. Kabolo. Yes, Dr. Bennett. Hello, everyone. Hey, how you been? I'm fine, and you? Well, do you have, a, you have a nice background today or no? No, I don't have a background. This camera is not okay. Let me oh, try. Oh, boy, it's, it's pretty dark there. <laughs> Let me just try. Yeah, that, that's a little light. You can't see much at all in that room. Here's yes. Marco. Hey, Marco. Hey, John. How are you? Good. How are you doing today? I'm fine enough. I was in a uh, morning shift in an uh, uh, in effective uh, uh, emergency department. Oh, you worked in the emergency room? Uh, in an emergency department, yeah. Wow. How many doctors do they have there? Uh, um, it, just me because uh, I'm uh, res I was responsible of the uh, COVID uh, in cases. So patients with suspect uh, infection of uh, virus, uh, they were sent to me. Oh wow! So you basically do a physical exam and then order some type of test, and that's it. Uh, yeah, obviously the uh, the COVID test uh, and. The Clinical general examination uh, and uh, it's a, a chest X ray. And obviously, okay, that's a basic workup for yeah, COVID, COVID patients? Obviously, the uh, blood gas exam. Blood exam, a chest X ray, a blood gas, you do only, only a patient's short of breath? Uh, yeah, of course, especially with uh, uh, short breathing, uh, 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 fever, or a uh, coke. Usually, they were studied also for blood gas analysis. Oh, okay. How, how was it? Go, go ahead. 
quarterly the the number of this these patients uh, is decreasing so oh excellent excellent huh? by a, a significant amount or small amount uh, um i don't wanna be <laughs> too hopeful yeah yeah <laughs> but uh, it seems very significant because uh, at the first uh, there were uh, something like uh, eight patients for shift uh, today i just seen uh, three patients good well, in China, it's a, they say it's a lot better. The, the Chinese neurosurgeon that gave the, Dr. Goy, uh, he said that it's almost back to normal. Uh, he said the uh, restaurants are open, uh, stores are open. They got back on the surgery schedule, uh, elective surgery. Wow. So uh, that's hopefully that's true. <laughs> Hopefully that's true, you know. Yeah, they were more severe than has uh, in, uh, for the measure of uh, uh, containment. Yeah, the, uh, because I've seen pictures of China and, they, you know, it's like, it's not full like it usually is, but it's much better than before. There was no nobody in the streets before. Yeah, correct. Well, you know, Miami is like, like that. There's nobody in the street now. Nobody. It's really, I've never seen it as empty today as it's ever been. Oh, wow. uh, you might. I've heard about Cuba because one, uh, one of my patients of this morning was from Cuba and uh, she told me uh, that uh, so two weeks ago they were just 30 cases, now they are 200. So, In Cuba? Yeah. Okay. Well, isn't they, they have a hard time really telling how many, right? Because a lot of people haven't even been tested. Yeah. You know what I mean? Oh. It's it's like they haven't tested a lot of people. So we had a we had a good crowd this morning, Marco. Uh, oh. For and we well, the lecture was from a Chinese neurosurgeon uh, that gave two lectures, mostly on aneurysms. Wow. Uh, it, it was, it was, it, hey, Yuha, Yuha is coming to lecture next week. Uh, yeah, on the Friday, All right? Yeah, is it Friday that he's left lecturing? Yeah, uh, April 10th, uh, so it's Friday, yeah. I, oh, I didn't see that, uh, yeah, but yeah, I was excited to hear that that he wants to give a lecture. <laughs> I did my best. Uh, uh, is a, uh, a panel about uh, peripheral surgery, a new topic uh, in uh, neurosurgical care, I guess. We never had uh, peripheral surgery. Hello, Hello, Rahul. Hello, Aminata. How you doing? We're fine. Hey, welcome back. Thank you. <laughs> okay, we'll be introducing everybody as we go around. Hello, Amir. Hello, Mr. Zhu. Uh, Mer's doing his own videos. That's great. How are we doing? Good, good. So are you doing just mostly spine videos or are you doing all kinds of videos? Or Because Dewin and uh, and uh, Jones, Amir's a neurosurgeon originally from Palestine, right? Or Jordan, Jordan. 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 And you're now practicing in the Ukraine, correct? Right. Yeah. And he's doing videos too, Facebook Live. So a lot of people, oh, Joanna's here. Good, good. Dr. Gabulo, and, and we're getting some people. Oh, that's great. It's the most we've ever had for a for, Yes, Dr. Bennett. Uh, yeah, uh, I don't know who wants to go first, you or Marco. It's up to you Dr. guys. Marco, Dr. Marco is starting with anatomy. Okay. Then I'll talk about, uh, yes. Okay, that sounds like a plan. Yes. Okay, Marco, you ready to go? Yeah, I am. Okay, ready to start. Now, everybody, uh, please pay attention to your mute button. Uh, you got to really keep your finger on top of it. When you share, of course, unmute yourself. But when you're not speaking, please mute yourself, okay? It's no big deal, but it, it's better if you do that uh, because it, there's no background noise and the camera will go to you if you make a noise and your microphone's on. The, the camera will go to your face. So uh, please uh, keep, keep aware of your mute button. 
Okay. Okay, Marco. 10, 9, 8, 7, 6, 5, 4, 3, 2, 1. Good afternoon from Miami. This is Dr. John Bennett televising for Neurosurgical TV for the Grand, uh, for Africa Neurosurgery Grand Rounds. Uh, this is the third week we're having it, and we have a good group of panelists. So let's try to quickly go around and, and go through it. Hello, good day, Aminata. Good day, Mr. Bennett, um, Dr. Bennett, rather. Um, Aminata, um, originally from the Gambia, training in Zimbabwe, living in Namibia. Oh, wow. That's great. We'll cover, <laughs> we'll cover a lot of Africa with you. I have to represent everybody. <laughs> okay, great. Okay. Hi, Joanna. Are you there? Hi, everybody. Greetings from Finland. Welcome, Joanna. Okay. Thank you. Uh, uday, Uday Baumik, are you there? Can you introduce yourself, please? Go ahead, Uday. We'll get, we'll get, yeah, hi, Uday. Could you please introduce yourself? Hi. I'm very much here. Okay. I'm sorry, we couldn't hear that. But anyways, uh, let's see, uh, is uh, Zolo, are you there? Zolo, not there? Zolo, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, Dr. Ben, hello, everybody. I am uh, Zolo Uswandriva, I'm a medical student from Cameroon. Uh, okay. Can I get <laughs> Yeah, and Zolo, is that the- Yeah, I see, I'm- um, oh. Go ahead. Yes, I'm Zulu Ivan. I'm a medical student from Cameroon. It's a pleasure being there. I'm a member of Afghan, and uh, it's, a, it's an honor to be there. Okay, very good. Welcome. Okay, uh, let's see. Jones, can you please introduce yourself? Jones Muna. Go ahead. No, go ahead. I'm, uh, I'm Jones uh, Muna from Zambia. I'm an healthcare expert. I've done a doctorate in healthcare management. Uh, well, and he's going to start webcasting. On Monday for the nurses of Zambia, he's going to do a webcast. As as is Dewin, are you there? Could you please introduce yourself? Hello, everyone. Uh, it's good to be here. I'm Dewin Chimba. I'm a medical student from Zambia. Uh, thank you very much. Okay, we have a good group from Zambia. Dewin is also starting to do webcasts in medicine. Uh, and Dr. Kabulo, welcome. Hello everyone, my name is Kabulo. Uh, I'm a resident in Zimbabwe, but originally from Democratic Republic of Congo. Nice to meet okay. you. Okay, welcome. He's a long time presenter here. Okay, Kartik, yeah. are you there, Kartik? Kartik Multani? We'll, we'll get better at this muting and introducing, etc. Okay, okay, Marco. There may be a few. Oh, Masindo, could you please introduce yourself? Hello, everybody. I'm uh, Musindo, resident, uh, resident from Mozambique. Okay, welcome. And he, he attends the most conferences. Welcome, Musindo. Okay, Marco, it's all yours and thanks for coming. It's Thank you, John. Uh, thank you to all my good friend of Africa Young Neurosurgeon and in particular uh, Dr. Kabulu to invite me to talk uh, about the uh, anatomy of a cervical spine. So let's start. A moment. Oh, well, just to share. Oh. Just in practice. Mm -hmm. Strange, it's not difficult. Okay. Let's see, Bambe. Oh my God, oh my God. Ah, oh wow. It's hard. Yeah, take your time. Okay, uh, I'm a uh, stranger. Uh, in just a moment. Okay, there's no, we can always edit this out. There's no worry. Okay, probably now can work. Let's see. There you go. There you, you get okay. it. Perfect. Perfect. Yeah, we'll just cut that out. Okay. Okay, there we go. Perfect. Perfect. Oh, what is it? Okay. So, um, moment. I'm 
I guess it's here. Okay, perfect. Okay, uh, in this panel, uh, we're going to talk about cervical spine anatomy. Uh, I um, decided to, uh, to do uh, a description uh, that uh, comprises the, the vertebra, uh, ligaments, muscle and vessel, and uh, a, a, little, uh, a very uh, little description of cervical medulla and uh, roots, uh, cervical roots. Uh, so let's start with the description of the vertebra. Uh, we got here a, a general view of the cervical spine, and we can see uh, immediately that there is a, a difference uh, in terms of uh, anatomy conformation uh, between the first two vertebra and the other five vertebra uh, from C3 uh, to the uh, C7. Uh, so we can uh, already uh, find a, a, a division between the upper cervical and the subaxial uh, tract. So let's see the first vertebra. The first vertebra is called also Atlas, uh, thus by the name of the mythological man uh, that was condemned by Jupiter to keep in his shoulders, the, the wall, the, the wall uh, globe. Uh, and is, uh, uh, we can see here a superior view and an inferior view. The superior view uh, show re, uh, immediately uh, a subdivision in an anterior arch and a posterior arch. Uh, the anterior arch uh, is uh, made by uh, also an anterior tubercle that is a a remnants of the vertebral body and the posterior as a posterior tubercle. Uh, that is a, a first uh, attempt uh, to uh, have an, a, a spine process. Uh, lateral, we have the uh, lateral mass uh, that are made by the uh, um, articular surface, uh, superior and inferior articular surface. And the far lateral, we got the, uh, the two branches, anterior uh, and the posterior, that fuse in the uh, far lateral aspect to uh, uh, get the transverse process and the transverse foramen, that is the, uh, the root where uh, the uh, vertebral vessel uh, go. Uh, from C5 until the uh, anterior, uh, uh, the, sorry, the uh, atlas. And in fact, we can see also in the superior view, this is, uh, aspect that is the growth for vertebral artery, and if the vertebral artery from uh, a vertical, uh, uh, vertical uh, aspect, uh, move in a horizontal way to perforate the uh, membrane, atlo uh, occipital membrane, and come into the uh, vertebral uh, foramen. Uh, so we can go uh, right now to the uh, second vertebra, that is the, uh, also called axis or epistrophius. And uh, uh, the first thing we can see of this uh, uh, vertebra is uh, that is made by two parts, the body and the dance. Uh, dance is from Latin, is meant tate, uh, and is the uh, is remnant of the vertebral body of the uh, atlas. Uh, so the uh, uh, a part, large part of the vertebral body of the atlas was incorporated by the axis. And uh, we can see that uh, uh, the, the axis two has a superior and inferior articular facet, uh, and uh, also uh, the dense has two, uh, two articular facet. One anterior that articulate with the uh, anterior arch of the atlas, and we're going to see in the uh, following slide how uh, it, it does. And uh, the posterior one, that articulate not with the bone, but with a ligament. And also we're going to see how because it's very important for the functional 
uh, work of these two vertebra, uh, Atlas and Haxi. And uh, also very important, the interarticular part here, that is an important landmark for the screwing in the uh, axis. The subaxial vertebra uh, uh, that go, go from C3 to C7 uh, have a similar uh, anatomy. They are made by anterior and uh, posterior branches that uh, uh, fuse leaving an anterior and posterior tubercle and uh, creating the uh, transverse foramen, a body, and a superior and inferior articular facet. And uh, we can see here a spinous process that is bifurcated. But uh, let's uh, look how uh, in, uh, in the seventh cervical vertebra, so from the four to the seven, the anatomy change uh, dramatically because uh, we got a, a spinous process that is not bifurcated anymore. And uh, also the aspect change in is uh, more similar to the uh, dorsal vertebra. In fact, the seven cervical vertebra is the um, uh, sort of uh, intermediate anatomy uh, from cervical to the dorsal tract. We can see also here a oblique uh, view of the cervic, uh, cervical vertebra of the subaxial uh, um, uh, spine. And interesting to see here this uh, uncus of body that are or uncinate process that uh, avoid uh, or better reduce the uh, uh, lateral bending of the uh, cervical uh, vertebra. Uh, and this uh, um, uh, aspect here uh, is a sort of grow uh, between the two uh, tubercle is the, uh, the passage for the uh, spinal uh, cervical nerve. It's very important because uh, the uh, uh, degenerative spond spondylosis can sometimes uh, uh, create a stenosis of this foramen and creating uh, uh, radiculitis. Uh, we're going to see now, now the ligament complex. Ligament complex generally is uh, similar to the uh, other tract of the, uh, of the spine. Uh, we, we know that the spine is made by a supraspinous and an interspinous ligament in the posterior aspect, but here uh, the, uh, don't exist a supraspinous ligament, so we can uh, talk about a ligament nuke that uh, uh, joined the uh, occipital bone here. Uh, and we can see better the uh, a view of the uh, vertebra artery and his uh, um, uh, root uh, with the horizontal aspect and the, and the uh, um, site here where he, perfor he perforate the uh, uh, atrocipital membrane. And better we can see here in the uh, anterior view, coronal anterior view, uh, the uh, uh, the uh, atrocipital membrane in the anterior aspect, the capsule of the uh, atroaxial joint, and a, a similar capsule also for the other level, like this uh, capsule of the zygapophyseal joint. Uh, as the other aspect of the spine, there is an anterior longitudinal ligament. Uh, but in the posterior view, we can uh, start to see something uh, uh, interesting. First of all, uh, this uh, uh, posterior atrocipital membrane and the vertebra artery that perforate the membrane to come into the vertebra canal. And more important, if we open the canal, that's what we can see. We see there is, uh, of course, a posterior longitudinal ligament, but this posterior longitudinal ligament going up creates this membrane uh, more uh, wide, that is the tectorial membrane. This tectorial membrane, uh, as uh, in a, uh, uh, behind, 
are complex and it's very important. And that's what I was to, to, uh, talking when uh, I talk about the uh, uh, atlo axis uh, articula uh, joint. That is the crusade ligament. Uh, the crusade ligament is a crooked uh, uh, sh uh, shape uh, uh, ligament made by a superior longitudinal band that uh, joins the, uh, the clavus, an inferior longitudinal band, uh, and a, a transverse ligament of the atlas. That's very important because we can see in this picture how this uh, uh, transverse ligament uh, creates a round um, uh, behind the, uh, the dance, uh, and uh, so this articulation work uh, like a, um, a, a pivot uh, allowing the rotation on the right on the left of the atlas and so creating the uh, rotation of the in fact this, uh, this uh, axial articulation joint is the responsible of the 50 percent of uh, head rotation. We can also see other uh, stabilizing ligament like the, the alar ligament and the apical ligament of the dent that is the, the remnants of the notochord. Now we are uh, going to see the musco and the vessa of the cervical spine. Musco and vessa are very important uh, uh, both as a stabilizer uh, of the uh, cervical spine but they have also a surgical interest because they are landmark and referring point for surgery, both posterior and anterior approaches. So we start with the more superficial layer. The, more, uh, the most superficial layer is made by the trapezius. The trapezius is a large muscle that uh, uh, joint the uh, um, uh, uh, joint the, uh, the ligament nuke uh, from cervical to the uh, dorsal tract and going to, uh, um, uh, to um, um, joint the spine of the scapula. When we go in the medial layer, we see the splenius muscles, the splenius capitis and splenius services that work as an extensor and uh, it work just by one side, uh, a bending extensor of the uh, cervical spine. And going deeper, we see the, uh, the anatomy the, uh, the, uh, behind the semispinalis capitis and spinalis capitis, we find the rectus capitis, posterior minor, and posterior uh, major, and the uh, two obliquus capitis musco, the superior and inferior. The superior and inferior and the rectus capitis superior major create a triangle. This triangle is called the suboccipital triangle. It is a very important landmark for the surgeon. Why? Because we can see here the horizontal tract of the artery, so dangerous uh, point. But there is also the posterior ramus of C1. That's a very important as well because uh, a damage of this nerve can create uh, a, a painful uh, symptomatology, also called as the uh, arno neuralgia, uh, that is responsible of discomfort for the patients uh, after cervical or occipital cervical surgery. We have here now uh, the anatomy of the anterior aspect of the cervical spine. I put here to uh, this uh, drawing to uh, remember how the anatomy can help the surgeon. So without uh, uh, describing the detail, we can see that uh, the, uh, the uh, anatomy help uh, how uh, we can see that's uh, the, if we want to uh, get uh, uh, approach to the C1, C2, the inferior border of the, uh, inferior, uh, of the mandible 
uh, allow us to uh, to have this uh, as a referral point for incision. If we go uh, for C3, we have the yoid bone as a landmark. For C5, C4, C5, uh, C4, C5, the thyroid cartilage. C6, the cricoid cartilage, and also, and we're going to see in the following uh, uh, slide, the uh, Cassignac tubercle uh, as a, a landmark. And for uh, the T1 aspect, and also uh, C7 and C6, the uh, superior border of the clavicle. So uh, let's have a look uh, uh, of the uh, anterior misco of the of, of the cervical spine. When we do uh, surgery uh, of the anterior uh, cervical spine, the first layer we see is the platysma. Platysma is a, a subcutaneous muscle. is the first muscle we find when we incise, uh, we cut the, the skin, uh, uh, and it is uh, immediately found. Uh, is a, uh, uh, is the first layer. So we uh, we go in deeper, and we can find the second. Uh, layer of the uh, 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 single layer of the cervical muscle that is made by the levators, uh, the, sorry, the sternocleidomastoid. Uh, and uh, um, very important for the surgeon, uh, the homoyoid muscle. Why is this very important? Because uh, you can see here that the homoyoid muscle is made by a superior belly that joint with the uh, uh, yoid bone and an inferior belly joined with the uh, uh, with scapula uh, create with the medial border of the sternocleidomastoid and with the uh, styloid uh, styloid musco a triangle this is called carotid triangle it is the uh, the root for anterior approach, for the most part of the anterior approach to the spine. Uh, using this route, uh, we go in, uh, in uh, um, behind the sternocleidomastoid, where we can see the vessel, um, the internal jugular vein, the common carotid artery. Uh, and it is very important in this case uh, to put a finger in this triangle because we can feel the carotid, common carotid artery by the pulse and thus a very help, uh, great help for the surgeon because uh, feeling the pulse, we go in medial and we can go uh, to the uh, more deeper aspect of the uh, and more anterior aspect of the spine, avoiding to, to uh, end in, uh, in the, in the uh, car uh, carotid uh, lodge. So we're going deeper and we can see the uh, deeper aspect of the muscle made by longus colli uh, and that's the uh, last layer we see before uh, approaching the vertebra, the cervical vertebra. Uh, it's very important here uh, to remember that uh, um, beneath the longus colli there are uh, rami of the uh, uh, of a vein. This vein is the uh, anterior tubular vein, and so when we uh, dissect this muscle to allow allow the um, the retractor to work there, uh, we uh, we uh, need to uh, to expect a blading that can be uh, fortunately well uh, checked and managed by the uh, uh, by the. Uh, uh, by surgical, okay. Uh, that's a, a picture of the uh, main vessel and in particular the venous vessel uh, of the, the cervical spine. In particular, we can see other structures we need to know when we do uh, cervical surgery uh, are the recurrent laryngeal nerve on, or also called the inferior laryngeal nerve. That's very important to know because it is located between other important structures that are the trachea 
and the esophagus. And we need to know that because cutting this uh, laryngeal nerve means, uh, uh, means it create a complication for the patients uh, uh, in terms of, uh, uh, of a laryngeal missed call and so breathing. The patients in, the, in this case need to, be, uh, to get tracheostomy uh, in emergency uh, way. And also remember, but this does when we use the left approach, that on the left side there is this green tube. This green tube is the thoracic duct. The thoracic duct usually is uh, um, uh, behind the uh, common cervical, uh, common carotid artery. Uh, uh, but we need to pay attention because cut the uh, thoracic ducts mean uh, to create uh, a very dramatic complication that is the uh, chylothorax collection. And we finish with a, a brief uh, description of the cervical medulla and roots. What we need to know? We need to know, uh, of course, uh, about the medulla, but I think that everybody of you know uh, the uh, anatomy of the medulla with the hor uh, anterior horn, that is the motor uh, location of the uh, uh, second motor ne neuron, uh, and, uh, or, and the posterior uh, horn. But we need to remember the, uh, the fact that I just described, it, that uh, the spinal nerve uh, um, use this route to, uh, to get, get out. So uh, we need to remember this when we do uh, surgery. And when we have a patient with uh, uh, radiculopathy without uh, uh, cervical hernia, it could be a uh, degenerative spondylotic stenosis of the foramen with compression of the, of the spinal nerve. And more important for the semiology cervical spine is the, uh, the emerging, uh, emerging of the uh, spinal nerve. We need to remember always that C1 emerge uh, between the uh, uh, and the uh, and C1, so between the occipital and C1. Uh, so from C1 until this level, the, uh, the, the spinal nerve as the number of the vertebral of the inferior vertebra. So in this case, C1, in this case, obviously, C2, so is a, a C3 nerve. Uh, but when we uh, go at the C7 level, the nerve here uh, take the, the, the number eight. So from this level, also called a transition level, there is a change in the nomenclature of nerve so from this level until the last level of spine, the nerve uh, description uh, uh, take the, the number of the uh, superior vertebra. So in this case, with the T1 vertebra, this is the T1 nerve. And we finish with this uh, picture that is an uh, uh, axial uh, section. Uh, that's uh, resume anatomy of the uh, in in a surgical way uh, of the cervical spine. Uh, we need to remember when we do surgery of the uh, posterior aspect, the um, uh, the anatomy and in particular the muscular anatomy. Uh, and we need to remember as well in uh, when we go in uh, in the anterior aspect, the, st the structure in particular the fascia. The fascia uh, of the uh, anterior cervical, very important to remember. We need to remember that we got a superficial and a deep fascia that is uh, sub, uh, divided uh, um, uh, in, in uh, other aspects that are the superficial, that is this, and, uh, uh, and uh, um, cover the sternocleidomastoid muscle. This is the middle. The middle cover the uh, homoioid muscle, and we go in deeper to the, uh, um, the fascia that uh, cover the uh, vascular nervous complex of internal jugular vein and common carotid uh, artery uh, and the uh, vagus nerve, uh, until the alar fascia that cover the two 
uh, longus colimusco, and this is the last fascia we see when we do anterior uh, cervical surgery. Thank you for your attention. Okay, um, let me see here. Thank you, Marco. Thank you very much. Uh, I, I guess the Italians were one of the, the first uh, uh, people that studied anatomy with Leonardo, right? Some of those, some of those illustrations remind me of Leonardo da Vinci. Uh, he, he was one of the first anatomists, right? Yeah, was one of the of the first to uh, to draw beautiful uh, uh, picture of the anatomy, and also Michelangelo Bonarotti. They were a fine anatomist, and in fact, the last picture I uh, I put in my in my uh, panel was uh, the David of Michelangelo. Michelangelo described it in the in the in the, is a is a. a, a Statue, a, a very fine anatomy because he was an anatomist. Sometimes was paid by the, uh, the clerkship, uh, not by, by not with money, but with uh, cadaveric specimen. You know, with cadavers. Yeah, because paid, he in, was paid in cadavers. That's unusual. <laughs> yeah, right, right. Uh, to, to study anatomy, to improve uh, his technique, and because he was a uh, curious, he was a curious. In fact, in, in his uh, uh, his statue, uh, in a, his um, uh, uh, his work, uh, you can recognize uh, all the aspect of the anatomy that just one man that uh, dissect, uh, perform cadaveric dissection. Uh, can uh, uh, can know. Yeah, I imagine that it was almost heresy to do such a thing to a body. Uh, religious people, I'm sure, didn't like that. You know, in, in my medical school in Mexico, uh, Marco, we had to pay the uh, grave digger to dig up a body. To oh. buy. We had to buy our corpses. Can you imagine that? I think, oh. I think most uh, medical students can relate to that because we wanted to have a corpse to, to uh, dissect. And there was a shortage at the school. I don't know if you guys, uh, what kind of things you did at your school, but at any rate, listen, uh, any comments or questions? We have a lot of people here today, it's great. Any comments or questions for uh, Marco from the panelists? Or just say hi to Marco. Hi, Marco. Hi, Nero. There's, there's the room. Uh, I'm so grateful uh, you done a uh, great presentation, masterclass presentation. Uh, I like it, and uh, uh, you talk about the, 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 the key point of neurosurgeon should know about uh, cervical anatomy region to perform um, surgery in this way. So thank you very much uh, for your presentation. Uh, I like it. <laughs> thank you. <laughs> no, it was in fact my intention to uh, do a presentation focalized on the surgery. In fact, it's an introduction for the uh, surgical panel of uh, um, of the colleague uh, of, the, of Dr. Uh, uh, Cabulo. Well, you know, I, I don't have to oh, go ahead, Amar. You have something to say? Go ahead. Unmute yourself, Amar. Amar. Unmute. Okay, I'll do so, it. Yeah, sure. Go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead again. Again, Amar. We missed what you said. I want to thank Dr. Meloni for, for this uh, great lecture. Thank you. Thank you, Amir. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Amir, Amir is starting to do uh, Facebook Live too, right, Amir? Maybe. <laughs> Maybe. Okay. <laughs> I'm not trying to put pressure on you, but there's a couple of panelists. And there's Noor. How are you doing, Noor? Hi, sir. I'm doing fine. How are you doing, sir? And hi, is sir Milani. And uh, we are sending you um, the heartiest wishes for safety and protection in Italy because we've been in touch with all those news about the COVID-19 infection, sir. Our prayers, prayers from me and on the behalf of my family, sir. We want to extend uh, deep wishes to you and your family for safety and protection during these very hard times. We are with you. Thank you. Thank, thank you, you very you. much. Thank, thank, you. You. thank you. Thank you very thank much, you. Nora. It is uh, nice to meet you here today. You are our guest, I think. <laughs> Welcome. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. 
Yeah, Nora's a lot, a lot on social media. You like Facebook, right? <laughs> Yeah, I, I do. I do like Facebook, sir. And sir, your your programs are are amazing. And sir, I I've, I've been discussing at home that uh, Professor Bennett has been has got a very he's he's a visionary and he's got a very far sighted idea of introducing everything online. So since uh, we are lo in lockdown now, we cannot travel anywhere. So sir, it is your webinar system that's been running and just taking things to, uh, into the next level. So that's that's wonderful. <laughs> Right, yeah, right, right. We didn't plan on, we didn't plan on this. Nora, but... uh, we should congratulate Nora because last time in China she win uh, the best prize. Uh, so oh, thank oh. you so much. Thank you so much. Thank I remember you. <laughs> we was meet uh, in China last time. So um, nice oh, you to met her in China. You went in China. In China. Yes. Yeah, no, I. Time. Uh, yeah, uh, actually, I couldn't uh, get my visa in time for China, so I had to skip that event. And later yes, on, yes. I, yeah, exactly. I met the ACN staff in Phuket, uh, uh, just, I guess, a few days after uh, after the China event. So I was able to make it for that way. So thank you so much, Dr. Nuruddin, because it's it's a big, huge pleasure for me to get congratulated for that article. I hope well, that, uh, <laughs> thank you so much. I'm, I'm deeply honored. Okay, any comments from the panelists or anybody that wants to introduce themselves and say hello uh, before we move on to Dr. Kabulo? Uh, uh, maybe me, I should present uh, myself first. I don't know. I'm sorry? I think, I think many people know them now. I should present myself. <laughs> okay, go ahead. Go ahead. Go ahead. <laughs> okay. Uh, it is Nourodin uh, Bancol. Uh, Bancol, I am uh, currently in uh, uh, France in uh, neurosurgery department of Tours, and uh, I am uh, I'm, I'm really um, uh, happy to, to, to be here today. Uh, so nice to meet you all. This is great. Twenty six people we have on the panel. Okay, yes. yeah, that's great. Okay, uh, we there's a couple more people we haven't met. I think. Uh, Rahul Singh, would you like to meet you, Rahul? You want to introduce yourself? Perhaps he stepped away and Dr. Well, why don't we continue? Okay, uh, we'll end this presentation and we'll start with the next. Okay, greetings from, uh, hello, go ahead, go ahead, Dr. Mm -hmm. Kartik, go ahead, go ahead. Go ahead, introduce yourself, Rahul, please. Well, we're missing communication. Okay, very good. Okay, yeah, this is John Bennett from broadcasting from Miami Beach for Neurosurgical TV. We're on the second talk of today's uh, uh, Africa Neurosurgery Grand Rounds. Dr. Uh, Kabulo, a neurosurgeon from the Congo, is going to present. Uh, and we went through the introduction. So, Dr. Kabulo, why don't we go straight to your presentation and welcome. Thank you, Dr. Bennett. Uh, hello, everyone. I want to thank Dr. Marco Meloni for your beautiful presentation. Uh, that was great. I like the images and uh, the way you explained. So it was very clear. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, I'm going to talk about degenerative cervical myelopathy. I don't know if you can see all my screen. Hello, Dr. John? Yeah, perfect, perfect. Perfect, perfect. Okay, thank you so much. Uh, I want to talk about degenerative cervical myelopathy, surgical decision making. Um, these, uh, these days, people are just uh, making confusion. People are calling degenerative cervical myelopathy. Others are saying cervical spondylotic myelopathy. So which one to use? Is it a degenerative cervical myelopathy or cervical spondylotic myelopathy? Um, but when we talk about degenerative cervical myelopathy, it's like an umbrella term covering everything. So it's better to say degenerative cervical myelopathy when you are seeing your patient before you make your diagnosis, before you do your imaging. Uh, because when you are saying cervical spondylotic myelopathy, spondylus means vertebra. 
So when you are talking about cervical spondylotic myelopathy, you only see uh, pathology related to disc, uh, to vertebral body, uh, either they are osteophytes uh, or joint problems. But talking about cervical spondylotic myelopathy, it's like we are ignoring ligamentous pathologies. It's like we are ignoring also other systemic fa factors. That's why now they prefer to say degenerative cervical myelopathy because it's an umbrella term covering cervical spondylotic myelopathy and also ligamentous pathologies and other uh, pathologies like congenital, uh, sport related factors, and uh, occupational factors. So, but people are still using one another, these two ways, either cervical spondylotic myelopathy, but it's better to say degenerative cervical myelopathy. Um, in terms of introduction, it's a progressive degenerative disease, which is uh, the most common cause of cervical spinal cord dysfunction in individuals older than 55. It can also be due to direct compression of the spinal cord or compression of surrounding blood vessels resulting in uh, varied clinical symptoms. So by the age of 40, most will have degenerative changes evident on radiograph. In fact, by age of 65 to 6, 60 to 65, 95% of asymptomatic men and 70% of asymptomatic women show degenerative changes on playing films. And degenerative changes often begin in the lower segment of the cervical spine, but they can also occur at any level. There was a study which was done uh, using a cervical spine MRI in only asymptomatic subject. And that study showed that in subject of years, 57% uh, at one or more levels and 40% had bone uh, osteophytes. Then, uh, like I was saying, the most common level uh, of abnormality is uh, C5, C6. Then in decreasing order, C6, C7, C4, C5, C3, C4, and C2, C3. Um, and those uh, myelopathy, spondylosis, degenerative changes will result in three clinical manifestations, myelopathy or radiculopathy or myeloradiculopathy. I'm going to go, I'm going to, 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 to talk about myelopathy in details. Uh, in terms of uh, epidemiology, it's more common in men and tend to present earlier than in women. And radiologically, the condition is present in 18% of men in the third decade, decade and almost 100% of men over the age of 70. And in women, um, it's, the disease presents later with 5% showing radiographic changes in four decades, going up to 96% in women over the age of 70. Uh, but changes are more common in patients with uh, rheumatoid arthritis. And when you, when patients with cervical myelopathy present in third or fourth decade of life, it is usually secondary to congenital stenosis because it's rare to see cervical myelopathy before age of 40. But if you see, usually it's in patients with congenital stenosis. So in terms of pathophysiology, I'll talk about three factors. They are like the pathogenesis is composed of static, dynamic, and uh, biological factors. And the features of uh, degenerative cervical myelopathy include gray and white matter degeneration, uh, anterior horn cell loss, uh, cystic cavitation, valerian degeneration of the posterior columns adjacent to the site of compression. And this is just an overview of the factors involved in the pathophysiology. Like I was saying, static factors, dynamic factors, and biomolecular factors. In static factors, we see spondylosis, disc degeneration, uh, ossification of the uh, posterior longitudinal longitudinal ligament, this ossification of like, in short, OPLL. OPLL, there's a, a most common classification of, uh, OP, uh, of 
posterior longitudinal ligament is from Japanese Ministry of Health, uh, which classifies uh, this uh, ossification into four uh, subtypes. There is, and they were using what a lateral radiograph to classify the ossification. You can get what they call the continuous. There is the center, there is the, the mixed and the localized. The continuous, it means you get ossification um, all over. It means behind the vertebral body and the disc space, you get ossification and it's continuous. But the segmental, it means the ossification is just behind the vertebral body, but not behind the disc. It's segmental, only the segment, the part of the uh, vertebral body. And there's the mix, the mix means it is combining both the continuous and segmental, but at different levels. And the localized, the localized is um, when the ossification is just behind the disc, but not behind the vertebral bodies. And the continuous is the most common. Uh, I think segmental is also most common, but it's controversial. And we have also, amongst the static factors, we have congenital stenosis, where you get patient before the age of uh, 40, presenting with symptoms when we have congenital stenosis. Then the dynamic factors, we have uh, degenerative spondylolisthesis, Physiological narrowing of canal diameter with neck, neck extension. I will talk about that with pictures. And also uh, strain and stretch forces placed on spinal cord with physiological neck movement. And biomolecular factors, we get uh, ischemic injury due to chronic compression of spinal cord vasculature and breakdown of blood brain barrier, blood spinal cord barrier, sorry. And also uh, there is increased uh, local inflammatory response. And in bio biomolecular factor, we have also increased local expression of uh, um, cytokine one receptors, CX3, CR1. That's a G protein coupled receptor found in macroglia, in macrophages, and also in T cells and also astrocytes. And when bound by its ligand, uh, which is called fractal kine or CX3 CL1. Uh, it mediates adhesion of migration and migration of leukocyte to inflamed tissues. And another factor, biomolecular factor, is glutamate mediated excito excitotoxicity. Um, excitotoxicity is the pathological process by which nerve cells are damaged or killed by excessive stimulation. Uh, by neurotransmitters such as uh, glutamate. You get um, excessive stimulation of neurotransmitter, then you get damage, uh, you damage or you kill uh, nerve cells. And also glutamate, okay, the, the last one, biomolecular factor, we have uh, oligodendrocytes and the neuronal apoptosis. So this, this is a PINSA phenomenon. The PINSA phenomenon is um, it, in which there is a guillotine effect uh, on the spinal cord. So what is happening? If you see uh, on the left, when you are flexing your neck, the ligamentum flavum, in case you get hypertrophy of the ligamentum flavum, the ligamentum flavum is stretched and is not compressing the cord, but you get disc bulge anteriorly compressing the, which is not uh, significant. But if you extend now your neck on extension, that ligamentum flavum, which is hypertrophied, will fold and compress the, the what? The, the cord, and also anteriorly, you get the disc, which is also compressing. Mm -hmm. Because if you trace a line from anterior, from the disc going posteriorly through the disc, the corresponding element posteriorly is the, the ligamentum flavum. So when you get this pincer phenomenon, it means on extension, you get pain because you get compression from both anterior and posterior. This, I just added this picture to show you uh, some of the causes of uh, myelopathy. Like you can see here, the ligamentum flavum is intact. There is no compression, but when it gets hypertrophied, the cord is now compressed at that level. 
You can get increased uh, anter anterior posterior vertebral body length like this, which is going to compress also the cord, or you get osteophyte like they compressing the cord. And sometimes you get spinal cord cavitation, especially with the compression of the blood vessels going to the brain, to the spinal cord, uh, with ischemia, then necrosis, and you get cavitation of the, the spinal cord. Or it can be a loss of vertebral body height uh, at the level of, say, like this one at C4, uh, there's a loss of vertebral body height. So, this is just the picture showing some of the causes I just highlighted before. And if you see here, you can also get a ossification of the ligamentum flavum, compressing there. You can also get the OPLL I was talking about. This is the, con the continuous one. It is starting from behind C6 up to C7, even at the level of the disc, you get ossification. So this, this diagram, I just put it to show some of the causes which can cause uh, cervical myelopathy. Then, according to symptoms and findings associated with the cervical myelopathy, uh, symptoms you can get neck pain, patient will complain of neck pain, unilateral, bilateral, upper limb pain, uh, weakness, numbness, loss of dexterity. Uh, patient sometimes will complain that he can't eat properly with the spoon, the patient can't close the buttons of the, the shed, that's what it includes in, in loss of uh, dexterity. Then you can get lower limb stiffness, weakness, or sensory loss, uh, paresthesia. You can get autonomic symptoms. Uh, patient can fall, imbalance, because sometimes they have ataxia. Uh, this limit sign, it's also a symptom because the patient can, can uh, tell you about limit sign, which is a shock like sensation extending down uh, to the spinal cord when uh, the patient is flexing the neck. The patient can describe this one, which is now a symptom. But if the patient is not describing, a doctor can also ask a patient to flex the neck and see if there is a limit sign. That is now a sign. Uh, there are few classifications like this Crandall and the Bat Dog classification of cervical myelopathy. Uh, it classified as uh, brachial cord syndrome, central cord syndrome, anterior cord syndrome, uh, branch cord, and clinical features. Uh, features, sorry. And there's a Ferguson and Kaplan classification, who classified now according to like medial syndrome, lateral syndrome. When you get medial syndrome, the clinical features you get long track symptoms. And when you get lateral syndrome, you get radicular symptoms. You can get also the combined or the vascular syndrome. Now, findings. You can get increased lower and uh, or upper limb deep tendon reflex, loss of superficial reflex below the neck, uh, upper limb weakness beyond the, bo the bounds uh, of a single nerve root, and, and so on. Sensory loss, spasticity in the limbs. These are just few signs, few videos I just put there to highlight, to explain some of the signs. Like this one, this is Hoffman sign. You get positive Hoffman sign when you get um, cervical myelopathy. I don't know if everyone is seeing that video. So you flex the middle finger, then you release suddenly. You get thumb adduction and finger flexion. I don't know if you, you are seeing the video. Dr. Bennett, Dr. Marco, can you see the video? Is the video playing? Yes, yes. Yes, it's yes. yes, yes, you can see you flexing. Yeah, you can it's see okay. it. So that's yes, the very clear. Thank you. you can, yes, you can get it. Uh, when you get cervical myelopathy, you see, you get thumb adduction and the uh, index flexion. And also, the patient will have sustained clonus. So if you check for clonus, it, there will be a clonus. There is also what we call positive finger flexor uh, reflex, where you put your fingers on the flex um, fingers, patient's finger. Then you tap on, your, on the back of your fingers. The patient will flex again. That's called positive finger flexor reflex. Let me try to put a video, OK? Um, okay. 
Yes, like you can see what they are showing there. You flex a little bit, uh, patient fingers, then you step, you put your hammer on your finger, then the patient will flex. So then you say positive finger flexor reflex. Mm -hmm. And ah. the patient will have also a Babensky sign or the alternative of Babensky chat dogs, open M, uh, and so on. There is also um, scapulohumeral reflex, which will be increased. So it is performed by tapping the tip of the spine of the scapula. Uh, if the scapula elevate or the humerus abduct, it is then a hyperactive uh, reflex, suggesting uh, upper motor neuron lesion, cervical myelopathy. And usually it's when the, 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 the lesion is above C4. Then you get also what is called inverted radial reflex. Normally when you are doing the radial reflex, the normal response should be extension of the elbow, extension and the radial deviation of the hands. But now, if you get an uh, inverted radial reflex, you will get flexion of the uh, extension of the elbow and flexion of the fingers. That inverted the radial reflex. And this is usually when the compression is around C5 level. There is also what, what is called finger escape sign or finger escape reflex. You ask your patient to put the hand in front, uh, facing down uh, for about 30 seconds. Then you see that the two ulnar digits will fall into flexion and abduction. That's a finger escape sign. There is also the froment sign. Let me try to play the video. Yes. So you are testing the ADATA policies. You give your patient a paper to hold. The patient should hold without flexing the thumb. Because if the patient flexes the thumb, it means the ADATA policies is weak. Yeah, that's positive. But the patient should hold the paper with the thumb straight, adapt, ad adapted without placing the tip of the thumb. That's the, 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 the from and side. You see it on the right. I don't know if my video, you can see my video properly. Yes, we can see it. Yes, we can see it. It's OK. Then, according to investigations, the simplest one is the plain radiograph. You do the AP and lateral uh, X-ray. What are you going to see there? Since X-ray is not showing, um, X-ray is not showing soft tissues. So you see, you won't see a disc, but you see narrowing of the disc space on uh, X-ray. You see osteophyte. You see joint subluxation. You see facet joint arthrosis, spondylolisthesis, and also ossification of posterior longitudinal ligament. Those are the things you, you, you see on the X-ray. But what they say, an absolute stenosis has been defined as sagittal canal diameter less than 10 millimeter, and the relative stenosis with a narrow spinal canal of less than 18. So flexion extension views can be used in the radiographic evaluation of subtle cervical instability. When you are suspecting instability, you do flexion extension or dynamic X-ray. And narrowing of the spinal canal can be calculated using the Pavlov ratio. When you are doing the Pavlov ratio, you have to take the AP diameter of the canal, which is A, labeled A. Then you take the AP diameter of the vertebral body at the same level. Then you take A divided by 2. It has to be 1. So the Pavlov ratio, you take the AP diameter of the canal, you take the AP anteroposterior antero diameter of the vertebral Okay. If it's now less than 0 0.8, it means there is stenosis because we are evaluating, uh, we are checking if there is stenosis. So if there is if less than 0 0.8, there is stenosis. Now, when we are doing now MRI, that was uh, um, an X-ray. On MRI, 
This is the imaging modality of choice. And in those where MRI is contraindicated or not tolerated, then we can do a CT scan with contrast um, for those patients. Now, findings on MRI, you can get degenerative arthritic change or ligamentous aberrations. Degenerative, you can get facet hypertrophy. On MRI, you can see. You can see facet joint instability. You can see degenerative spondylolisthesis or subluxation or disaniation or bulging uh, on MRI. And according to ligament, you can see hypertrophy of ligamentum flavum. You can see OPLL, uh, ossification of ligamentum flavum or classification of the, the of spinal ligament. Okay, I mentioned already. There is also a test done, EMG electromyography and somatosensory evoked potential, which are diagnostic investigations which are infrequently used to exclude. We use them to just exclude other differential diagnosis, such as multiple sclerosis or amyotrophic lateral sclerosis or peripheral uh, neuropathy. There are few functional scales uh, we use for cervical myelopathy. This is called the Modified Japanese Orthopedic Association score, which is uh, four parameters. You test for motor dysfunction in upper extremities and lower extremities. You also check for sensory dysfunction. You check for upper extremities and also sphincter dysfunction. With this score, the MJOA, Modified Japanese Orthopedic Association. If the score is from 15 to 17, that is mild. And from 12 to 14, it's moderate. And it's severe when the score is from 0 to, to 11. There is also what is called the NURIC classification system for myelopathy from grade Z1 to grade five uh, and uh, their level of neurological impairment. Grade one, it's normal gait. Grade two, it's mild gait involvement, but still employable. Grade three, it's gait abnormality, which prevent employment. And grade four, the patient can walk, but with assistance. And grade five, the patient is wheelchair bound or bedridden. There is also this Ranawat classification of neurological deficit, uh, where they are putting in terms of class, class one, class two. Uh, class one, there's no neuro deficit. Class two, subjective weakness. Um, and the class three is two. Class three A and class three uh, B. In A, objective weakness and long track signs. And patient is still ambulatory, but class 3B, objective, there's objective weakness and long track sign that patient no longer uh, able to, to ambulate. Now, evaluating the outcome, there are outcome measures. You can use your MJOA, M uh, which is a functional status, where uh, it is scored out of 18. It is the commonly used in research studies. And Another advantage of this is clinician, clinician administered. But the disadvantage of this is the reliability has not been established and the four category are not equally weighted. When you're talking about motor, sphincter, and whatever, those are the disadvantages. And this MJOA, the lower the score, the greater the disability. There's another one, I'll just go through a few ones. There's uh, another one called Neck uh, Disability Index, which is also a, a good one, but the, 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 the problem is, is patient reported. It's subjective, not objective. And there's the NURIC, I already talked about that NURIC classification. There's 30 meter walking test. There are many um, uh, scales we can use. Now, in terms of differential diagnosis of myelopathy, 
they are intrinsic to spinal cord and extrinsic. Intrinsic, it can be a cervical disc herniation, congenital spinal stenosis, synovial cyst, osteomyelitis, can be an epidural abscess and so on. Can be trauma. You can get a fracture which is compressing the, 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 the cord or central cord syndrome. Can be OPLL, extramedullary hematopoiesis, can be budget disease. Uh, and intrinsic to spinal cord can be an intramedullary spinal cord tumor, which is giving you uh, myelopathy, cervical myelopathy. Can be an infection. Can be an inflammatory uh, process. It can be a non-infectious inflammatory like uh, SLE, uh, sarcoidosis. And it can be also toxic, metabolic, or hereditary. It can be vascular and also others like uh, syringomyelia or motor neuron disease. And also there are things which can mimic uh, myelopathy, like parasagittal cerebral lesions, such as tumor, you can get a parasagittal meningioma, which is mimicking, uh, you know, according to the homunculus, um, the lower limbs, the feet are in the middle aspect. Then you get the parasitic meningioma giving you like ataxia and other signs. It can mimic a cervical myelopathy or multiple strokes, brainstem stroke, Guillain Barre syndrome, or conversion disorder. Now, what is the treatment of degenerative cervical myelopathy? Non operative management, this is for patients with mild degenerative cervical myelopathy and patients who are unfit for surgery due to another medical comorbidities or personal choice. But treatment options include now lifestyle changes. I know, I, I remember one day we were talking about this uh, and my professor was saying, you know, sometimes people are, when you are chief, you become a chief and you are um, walking, they call you behind, you tend, with the whole body, instead of just turning the head, also making a movement on your neck and so on, because you are now chief, you want to turn with everything, then uh, with time you get those uh, um, arthritis and so on. So lifestyle changes is also a good thing. Physiotherapy, analgesia and neck braces. Operative management, um, it's for patients with progressive disease intolerable symptoms and when conservative management is unsuccessful and the primary goal of surgery is decompression so surgical intervention can be considered in two anatomical areas it can be the upper or the lower which is the subaxial skin, apart from C0 to C2 or the subaxial spine. And three general approaches, anterior, posterior, or combined. Uh, you combine both anterior and posterior approach. So when you are considering now approaches, there are multiple factors which should be addressed. For example, the site of compression, the number of levels involved, deformity, instability, radiological characteristics, the age of the patient, comorbidities, lifestyle, if the patient is smoking or not, and patient wishes and expectations. Now, according uh, for posterior approach, the most common includes, is the, mo is the most common the posterior approach. People usually prefer the posterior approach, but in the posterior approach, it includes two common procedures, laminectomy with or without fusion and laminoplasty. There is also minimally invasive surgery where you can do a skip laminectomy, a tubular or endoscopic procedure. And anterior approach, you can do anterior cervical discectomy and fusion. You can do anterior copectomy, cervical copectomy and fusion. You can do hybrid procedures where you do in hybrid, you do at one level, you do a discectomy and another level, you do a copectomy or you can do cervical arthroplasty. Now the combined approach, uh, it's for complex cases, especially when there is compression for, from both anterior and posterior. Um, and also, both approaches may utilize, may be utilized in conjunction with uh, one another. 
No, this is a, an evidence-based recommendation for specific surgical interventions in the context of uh, degenerative cervical myelopathy. You get your surgical approach and recommendation. Now, when to use anterior or posterior approach, you compare effectiveness and safety between anterior and posterior approach. And in general, in the presence of ventral pathology, a limited number of stenosis, stenotic segment less than three, and the presence of kyphotic deformity favor an anterior approach. So it means when you, the number of levels are less than three, and also uh, there is a kyphotic deformity, you have to go anteriorly. And in the presence of posterior pathology, a greater number of stenotic segments, more than three segments, and you want to maintain a cervical lordosis and the presence of OPLL, uh, okay, sorry, more than three, you go posteriorly. And this is laminectomy and fusion versus laminoplasty. Existing literature suggests both procedures to be safe and effective for the treatment of degenerative cervical myelopathy. No evidence of differential efficacy or safety currently exists so far, maybe new uh, publication. And the choice of procedure to depend on individual preference and surgeon family, uh, familiarity. Then anterior mouth level versus hybrid versus copectomy. When performing an anterior approach in the setting of minimally retrovertebral disease, multiple discectomy is recommended over copectomy or discectomy copectomy hybrid procedures. But when performing an anterior approach in the presence of significant retrovertebral disease, discectomy copectomy hybrid approaches are preferred when possible over multiple copectomies. Then alternative procedures included, like skip laminectomy, minimally invasive, tubular or endoscopic. There are insufficient evidence so far uh, to recommend these procedures over the more conventions approaches discussed above. Now, these are the factors that would promote one approach over another. Such the alignment, there's a kyphosis. If there's a kyphosis, you prefer to go until if the number of levels are more than three, you go posterior. Posterior is better than anterior. If the number of levels are less than three, anterior is better than posterior. And age and comorbidities, like in elderly uh, with greater comorbidities, it's better to go posterior. And uh, also, if there's instability, yes, it's better. Uh, anterior or posterior with fusion. Instability, there's no instability. Posterior, you do laminopathy or you can also do anterior. Medical, a multi-center double blind randomized placebo control clinical trial is being carried out, which evaluate in a neuroprotective drug, which is called uh, Riluzol, a sodium glutamate antagonist used both pre and post surgery. Would there be any benefit in those undergoing surgical decompression for decompressive cervical myelopathy? So, as aforementioned, degenerative cervical myelopathy involves both static and dynamic factors, which trigger cell ischemia and cell death due to sodium influx and glutamate, glutamatergic excitotoxicity. But this drug is currently FDA uh, approved for the treatment of amyotrophic lateral sclerosis, which have similar clinical features to cervical uh, myelopathy. Now, in conclusion, cervical spondylosis myelopathy is a debilitating condition that commonly affects the elderly and occurs as a result of degenerative change leading to cord compression. It is important to appreciate each pathophysiology, clinical presentation, and investigation when considering optimal management. Conservative treatment remains a role in the management of mild cervical spondylotic myelopathy, but established surgical treatment options appear to yield improvement in neurological function in those with progressive disease or intolerable symptoms. Anterior surgery is often beneficial in patients with stenotic disease, limited to few segments 
various procedures surgery allows for decompression of uh, multiple segments. Thank you so much for your attention. These are my references. Uh, okay, Dr. Kabul, great. Thank you very much. Great presentation. <clears throat> I'm happy to say Dr. Atul Goel is in the audience. Uh, I'm sure some of you recognize his name. Hello, Atul. Are you there, Atul? Perhaps he may have stepped away. Uh, I believe he's an expert in the uh, Atlanto axial area. I don't know if you've heard of him, Dr. Cabulo, uh, but I think that's probably why he came to talk to you about something. Anyways, he'll probably come back. Uh, okay, any comments or questions from the audience? Amir, do you have anything to say? Uh, okay. Nothing to say, only oh. thanks uh, to you yeah. and Mr. Cabulo for this lecture. Okay, thank you, no problem. Okay, anybody else uh, have a comment, a question for Dr. Kabulo? Uh, yes, uh, go ahead, Nuru. Thank you very much, uh, Dr. Kabulo, for your great presentation and uh, uh, your classification uh, was so clear and uh, so useful. So thank you very much for your great presentation. And uh, I, I enjoyed I, I enjoy it. <laughs> hey, Nuru, thank, thanks for coming. Okay. More questions or comments okay, from the panel? Go ahead. Okay. Uh, first of all, thank you very much, uh, Kabula, for your presentation. It was very complete and exhaustive, uh, even because you uh, uh, surgical uh, uh, management uh, uh, and the choice of uh, approaches. Uh, very, very interesting. Uh, my question is one. You talk about conservative management. Uh, uh, can you tell me if in the conservative management, uh, for your point of view, is contemplated the use of steroid too and how? Okay, Dr. Marco, you talk about steroid. Yeah, corticosteroid in the conservative. Corticosteroid, it, it, it's controversial. It's controversial. There are people who are using corticosteroid, others are not using steroid. Uh, they, because people, at the beginning, people used to say, when you operate, when you go for myelopathy, it means the aim is to stop the progression of the disease. But after studies, they realized that people are gaining even in terms of uh, score, especially the NURIC score. Mm -hmm. Someone can be in five, you operate, after two years, is now in three, so gaining more points. But steroid, uh, in our center, we don't use. It's, it's controversial, I know. But other centers are using, but we don't use in our center, in cervical myelopathy. OK, thank you very much. You're welcome. Any more comments or questions from the panelists? Uh, me, I think that uh, usually uh, uh, steroid, uh, sometimes uh, we can use that uh, in uh, uh, traumatic cases. Uh, after uh, operation about uh, cervical myelopathy. In post-operative, you can use that maybe 40, just 24 hours to 48 hours, uh, just to, um, sometimes you can have uh, uh, to limit it to the cytotoxic edema after surgery. Sometimes uh, we use that uh, in combined with um, pregabalin, uh, pregabalin molecular to, to treat uh, uh, just uh, 24 or 48 hour post uh, operative. And in cases about uh, medulla contusion, uh, uh, spine contusion uh, after trauma, sometimes we use as steroid. But uh, like you say, Kabul, it is so controversial. Any study now uh, at nowadays uh, show them uh, it is uh, very useful to use steroid, but uh, uh, in some cases uh, it, it is done. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Uh, let's take this opportunity to meet a few of the panelists that we haven't met because part of the value of these meetings are networking. Uh, Dr. Kanu, uh, are you there, Dr. Kanu, to introduce yourself? Mm, perhaps not. Uh, Rahul, uh, are you there, Rahul? Geez, I'm striking out zero for two. Uh, and Dr. Goel. Oh, there you are. There you are, Dr. Canoe. How are you doing? Thank you. 
Okay. Yes, I'm okay. Thank you. Greetings from Lagos, Nigeria. Wonderful presentation, and I enjoyed it. Thank you for coming, Dr. Kudu. From Nigeria, correct? Yes, sir. Okay, welcome. And Dr. Goel, have you come back uh, to say hello? Uh, I know I'm not a neurosurgeon, but I know he's quite a big name in neurosurgery. Dr. Manzer, are you there? Uh, and Jones, you've already introduced yourself. Rahul? Jeez, Zolo, yes. I'm not, go ahead. Yes sir. yes, sir, it is wonderful presentation. Thanks, thanks a lot, sir. Okay, Dr. Manzer, where are you from? Yeah, from India. Okay, welcome. Yes, sir. Thank you. Thanks, Lord. Yeah, we are learning lots from all this webinar session continuously every day. You're welcome to come to all of them. Do and anybody that we don't have your email address, please put it um, in the chat box. Okay. I see one. I see one. Uh, one uh, doctor Aminata Salah. I would like to to know. I think I know her, but I don't. I'm not sure. It Dr. Aminata was it, here. It is um, possible to present yourself, please, uh, Dr. Aminata? <clears throat> well, you know, no, no, no. she was here earlier. I think she may have stepped away. Dr. Oh, there she is. There she is. Okay. Yeah. Um, I am uh, Aminata Yande Sala. I am originally from the Gambia, um, living in Namibia, but training in Zimbabwe. Actually, Dr. Kabulo is my boss uh, in Zimbabwe. Uh -huh. <laughs> Okay, very good. Thank you very much. Okay, nice to meet you. Good. Likewise, well, nice to meet you. Okay, you guys want to exchange emails or something? Because uh, if you want to exchange emails or something, just put it in the chat and just instruct the person. Like Rahul just sent me his email, so I'm going to put his on the mailing list. And anybody that is not on the mailing list is welcome to leave their email. You see, with the, uh, when you're on the email list, I generally uh, mail out uh, an email that has the link to actually come in the panel so that you don't have to search for it. Uh, hopefully you get in the email. If you have time, you can jump in. And obviously if you're busy, just put it aside. Okay, Dr. Canoe, okay, let me grab yours too. Okay. I'm still on the mailing list. I'm on the mailing list, but just in case someone wants to reach, reach me. Oh, okay. That's Dr. Canoe. You see, Dr. Canoe, if someone yes. wants to reach Dr. Canoe, uh, his, his email is in the mail in the chat box there. And, and uh, Noor, how are you doing over there? Hope you're muted, Noor. Jeez, uh, when I was married, I wish I knew there was a mute button. Okay, well, I, we can't hear you, Nora. I'm sorry. Okay, very good. Okay, I guess we'll end this formally. Uh, and thanks, everybody, for coming. We have another webcast, uh, let's see, obviously next Saturday. I believe Dr. Marco is going to present again on peripheral nerves, right, Marco? Uh, yes, uh, it's my intention to start with uh, um, a, a session of the panel about peripheral nerve surgery, because this is my main uh, working field. So I have oh. to share with you my, my interest for this uh, uh, debated uh, topic of neurosurgery. Oh, okay. Is that your main interest? Uh, Thank you so much. Is peripheral nerve injuries, uh, Marco, was that your main interest in neurosurgery? Uh, peripheral nerve, uh, uh, yeah, is an uh, interest of neurosurgeon, but as well is a field for other specialty like orthopedic and plastic surgeon, because uh, it, they are district that uh, uh, involve sometimes uh, other speciality. In fact, the peripheral neurosurgeon need to be interfaced with other speciality. Uh, for example, for blood expressus injury, uh, sometimes they are caused by uh, clavicle fracture. So in this case, uh, the neurosurgeon need the help of the orthopedic. Right. Uh, um, so uh, is a, 
uh, is it quite different from the classical neurosurgery? Because in peripheral neurosurgery, we have uh, another anatomy, other district like the upper and the lower limbs. Uh, but it's, um, uh, it's very interesting also because sometimes it, it is a differential diagnosis, as uh, highlighted uh, uh, rightly, Dr. Cabulo, for the pathology. Uh, sometimes uh, um, uh, um, um, uh, radiculopathy can be involved in the in the in, the, in different diagnosis with uh, brachial plexus uh, pathology like uh, outlet rackage syndrome. So is a um, is ob of course a, a over speciality that could be functional surgery. But uh, I think that uh, every young neurosurgeon need to know a bit of peripheral surgery. Then it's very interesting in a technical way uh, in terms of a recovering of, a, uh, of a nerve lesion by using the uh, nerve transfer uh, is very, very interesting. Uh, it has an experience uh, I saw in, uh, in Michigan uh, uh, on the department of my dear friend, uh, uh, Professor Linda Young. And in Minnesota, at the Mayo Clinic, uh, under the direction of the Dr. Robert Spinner. Okay, very good. Uh, Dr. Goel, have you stepped away? Because uh, it's like uh, being at a sports event and a sports star comes in. You want to introduce him. <laughs> Dr. Goel, are you there? Perhaps he stepped away. Okay, we'll formally end this and uh, we'll speak oh, Really, it is Dr. Goel. Uh, I, 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 want, I want to say I want to say hello to Dr. Noor Ulda Maria. Hi. She's a friend <laughs> of mine. <laughs> How are you? I'm I'm great. How are you doing? Yes, you're a great I, friend of mine. Yeah. How are you, how are you doing? Yeah, good, good. Unfortunately, IBNC was postponed. <laughs> exactly, it's, it's not been planned at, in, in November, I guess. In November, in November yes. No. <laughs> and it sure. will be very cold. In, and it will be very cold in Italy yeah, back there. I, I, I guess there will be snow falling because in Istanbul, uh, it is usually the time of snowfall in, uh, in November. And I guess in Italy, it will be much yes. colder. <laughs> yeah. So, our, sure. how's everything at your end? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> we are going to have a 